Dale Little here with Rescue America Ministries in Chesson the Deer, Romania, and uh, we're in Daniel chapter 2, uh, looking at the image that um, in a dream that uh, God had given Nebuchadnezzar, and Daniel has just revealed to him what uh, is, or is in the process of revealing to him uh, what this image uh, represents. Uh, and uh, uh, it's the image of uh, uh, iron, clay, and uh, brass and silver uh and the image's head was a fine gold back up to verse 32 there and get it all right there um his breast and arms of silver his belly and thighs of brass his legs of iron his feet part of iron and part of clay and so we will we'll look into that but uh daniel's beginning to tell nebuchadnezzar what all this stands for he says thou in verse 37 thou o king art a king of kings for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And uh, in verse 38, he says, Thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall rise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces, and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. <clears throat> And whereas thou sawest the feet of toes, and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it uh, of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed uh, with the miry clay. And the toes and the feet were part of iron, part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the... Um, a seed of men <coughs> but they shall not cleave one to another even as iron uh, is not mixed with uh, clay and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be d destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever for as much as thou sawest that stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. So Daniel comes in with authority and uh, knows what God has given him. And... Uh, I want to encourage every uh, man of God, uh, whether you're a pastor or a Sunday school teacher or if you're a, an evangelist or whatever, when you give the Word of God, if you've studied and you know what God's given you, then uh, you, you can speak with authority. Uh, don't uh, be timid uh, in, uh, in handling it. Uh, just be bold. And so uh, uh, I'm reminded of Jesus, you know, that they recognized Jesus that come from God. Some of them did uh, in the temple and uh, in the synagogues as he spoke because they said uh, he spoke with one as having authority. Uh, they'd never heard anybody speak like that. You got these uh, Jewish uh, scribes and the Pharisees and people like that in the temple and the priest and uh, kind of, uh, I don't know. Uh, he hauled around a little bit, and so uh, here comes Jesus, and Jesus, uh, he was the Word of God, so the very Word, so he could speak with authority. Uh, and so shall we, uh, if if we study and we're sure what God's give us. Uh, don't be, like I say, don't be timid. Go ahead and speak. Um, as with authority from God's word. And so uh, we see that um, in verse 45, he told Nebuchadnezzar that the great God had shown him what would happen in the future. Now, let me point out something. Have you noticed that God pays no attention to the phrase separation of church and state that people try to say is in our Constitution when it's not there? Um, that's just a ruling that the few people on the Supreme Court and uh, they're, they're supreme as far as our 
level of government goes, but uh, unfortunately, sometimes they think they're supreme in the universe. Uh, no, there's one above you, and that's the God of heaven that's supreme. And uh, they will give answer to him one day. Uh, but the Constitution of the United States uh, never uh, intended that Christianity even be separate from the government entirely. Um, it simply states, and I don't have it here in front of me, but uh, simply states that you know there will not be an establishment of religion. And the courts have taken and stretched that to mean uh, things that are unimaginable from the original intent. And people go back to a letter that was written, I think, by James Madison. Uh, it's been a while since I've studied all this. Uh, <clears throat> I hope I've got all the details right. But as mentioned, the uh, separation of church and state. Well, uh, one man mentioned it in a letter. That's not the way they put it in the Constitution. We didn't adopt a letter by James Madison uh, to base our government on. We, a group along with him, uh, met, and I think it was in that group anyway, but anyway, it, it was not his letter that was adopted. The Constitution was adopted and signed, and that's what rules our country is supposed to, not a letter. And there's nothing in there that says anything about separation of church and state. Uh, and, and I want to tell you, yeah, you can, you can make all the rules and the courts can make all the rules they want to and uh, kick uh, prayer out of school and take, uh, uh, you know, the Ten Commandments down everywhere and, and do away with all these things. Um, uh, that don't bother, I mean, you know, that's not going to phase God. Uh, you, God's still God wherever he's at. And uh, you, you can't kick, kick him out. You can kick his people out. But God's going to be there. But uh, you may not get his help that you rely on, uh, that you'd like to rely on. And so uh, I was, um, speaking of that, I was at, uh, in the years I worked with Prison Fellowship Ministries, I uh, was down in Charlotte when Chuck Colson was speaking um, at a uh, Promise Keepers event down there. And we had a, uh, myself along with uh, a couple other representatives and then a few other people from the Charlotte area there um, had come in and had a box lunch and, and then we were able to set up in uh, so, uh, one of the race car teams had um, loaned us their um, a suite to sit in and, and watch. But anyway, as before that, we sat down just to a box lunch at the table and I sat down almost across from Chuck Colson there as he was uh, eating this box lunch before he went out to speak and he was relating to us um, that uh, he was at a luncheon uh, somewhere uh, I suppose up maybe in the D.C. area I'm not sure where it was now I'm sure he's got he related to it in some of his books but I can't recall offhand but he was at a big function somewhere in a, a big banquet and um, next to him sat a uh, superintendent of schools uh, wherever he was at and he said this superintendent, you know, struck up a conversation and talked and talked. And, and he was bragging about uh, that he is one that had in his school district had gotten the Ten Commandments took down uh, throughout all the schools, took down off the walls and, and done away with. And Chuck said we just listened to him, let him talk. And he said it wasn't long until he uh, got around and, and started uh, talking about the problems they were having in school. And he said, you know, they have such a problem with cheating and uh, on tests and, and stealing things. And uh, uh, Chuck said, he just said, well, he said, maybe you need to put some signs up, thou shalt not steal. So, um, you know, we took all these things out. Um, but, hey, God's still there. Uh, but he's not going to be there in the same way, in the same helpful way. Uh, once, if you don't want God, then he's, you know, you've won, you're the one that has said you don't want any help from him. Uh, thank God you're still breathing, so you're still getting help from him, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. Uh, but the separation of church and state, you can, the Supreme Court can say all that they, they want to, and that may stop certain activities and things. They try to, but... Uh, uh, God don't pay attention to that. 
I mean, you put any little uh, rules that you set up, uh, God's not affected by it. Now, let's look at verse 45. Daniel tells Nebuchadnezzar that the dream is true and its meaning is certain. Um, and as I said before, if I could predict uh, things in the future 50% of the time, I would probably be on national TV. Uh, people talk about the prophecies of Nostradamus and, uh, and some uh, so-called psychics, but they can't compare. Uh, they can't compete with the reliability of God's Word. They only predict the future. God tells the future. Uh, his predictions are real prophecies. Um, they're not predictions as you'd think, you know, about the, the weatherman trying to predict the weather. They're true. Uh, the Babylonians believed in many gods, and Daniel was telling Nebuchadnezzar that there was only one real God. And notice in verses 44 and 45, Daniel gives credit to the God of heaven. I mentioned before that um, the people in those days worshipped many gods. And so da uh, Daniel's trying to bring it home in a um, nice way, I guess you might say, uh, that uh, there's only one God. Uh, let me back up here. Yeah, 44 and 45 it says, In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up, you see there, the God of heaven, set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all the kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and the, that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, clay, silver, and gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. So Daniel's leaving. Uh, Daniel is um, being very wise here, I think. Uh, he knows what. Uh, that Nebuchadnezzar believes in all kinds of gods. Daniel's not there and, and tells him, or well, king, these, these gods you're worshiping, they're nonsense, uh, all this. But he's letting him know in a subtle way. And I'm sure this didn't go unnoticed by Nebuchadnezzar. But uh, Daniel very specifically said, the God of heaven and the great God, uh, not one great God, <laughs> Uh, one of the gods, or this one of the gods, but the great God, and, and he's letting King know, and the King did know, I'm sure, that the the uh, uh, religion of the Jews and uh, uh, the, about Jehovah God that they worshipped one God, and and Daniel's driving that home that there's only one God, uh, and so he's uh, boldly uh, proclaiming that to the King uh, here, in Nebuchadnezzar. And I'm sure, I'm sure the king took note of it. And so we, uh, the uh, Babylonians believed in all these gods, and uh, Daniel said there's only one God. And we see in verse 46, it says, Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face, worshipped Daniel, and commanded that they shall, should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. And the king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God... So here Nebuchadnezzar still, he's not taking uh, what Daniel put out to him. He said, of truth, it is that your God is a, a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. So the king, he responds, he picked up on what Daniel was saying. Uh, that there was the God of heaven, there's the great God. And Daniel said, well, there's one God. And the king comes back and said, well, the truth is that your God is a God of gods. Um, so here it is uh, in a subtle way without getting his head chopped off. Uh, Daniel's able to let the king know, you know, there's only one God. <laughs> But uh, Nebuchadnezzar was not ready to accept that. But he said, well, your God is a great God, but uh, he's not the only one. But yeah, he's, he's, he's a good one. And he is a great one. He's God of gods. He, he may be over all these other gods, but um, he's just one of many still. And so even though Nebuchadnezzar was greatly impressed, he let Daniel know that he was not convinced there was only one God uh, uh, there. And so um, <clears throat> we'll see that Daniel... 
had an opportunity to do to uh, share his faith and witness uh, with uh, Nebuchadnezzar here. Uh, I, you know, I have people today that uh, uh, think that people aren't supposed to work in certain places. Well, you know, you're a Christian. I, I don't see how you can work a place like that. How can you work that place? Now, don't get me wrong. There are some places. I mean, if you talk about the strip joints and um, uh, adult theaters and uh, places like that, and, and you're doing things, and part of things that uh, are, are immoral, uh, yes, that's different. But uh, just because uh, the owner is uh, immoral, just because the owner of a business uh, uh, is not a Christian, uh, I have some people say, well, you know, I don't see how people work there. I, they shouldn't work for that man. Uh, he's an evil, wicked man. Well, God, if, what, if, what if God took all his people out? Those people there, some of them, are bound to be a witness to him. And they're thorn in his side. And God's put them there for that reason. So it's not up to me to say that this person or that person should not be working up this and that place. I worked in a prison for 11 years, um, a high security prison. And um, it, it was tough. It kind of wore on me spiritually. It didn't get me back out into sin. It didn't, you know, break me down like that, but it's, it was tough. Uh, and I wondered at times, and uh, I had to miss Sunday service uh, because I had to work every other weekend. Someone has to be there. Uh, and so uh, it was difficult, and I'm sure those people criticized. Uh, people nurse, work in nursing, in hospital, places like that. Uh, someone has to do that work. Uh, what if, uh, what if I'll... Christian people just pulled out of those times, types of uh, places and businesses and didn't work there at all. Uh, there'd be no witness there. And uh, God has put some of them there uh, to be a witness uh, to these, uh, these wicked people. Uh, just as he put Daniel. I mean, Daniel didn't have to work for Nebuchadnezzar. I mean, the Hebrew children, uh, later on when they were threatened with the fiery furnace, they said, uh, well, you know, if God delivers us, then so be it. If it not, then we're still not going to bow down. So Daniel could have made that choice here with Nebuchadnezzar if he'd wanted to. But uh, I think Daniel realized that he still had a, a avenue of influence to the king uh, as long as he was working for him. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's Nebuchadnezzar about as wicked a, a man, a wicked a king as you could uh, serve under. Uh, and what he did to, to uh, Jerusalem, what he did to the temple, what he did to God's people, uh, it had been easy for Daniel to say, I'm not serving, you can go ahead and kill me. Uh, but he didn't say that because God had him there for a purpose. And God's probably got you wherever you're at for a purpose. Are you uh, completing that purpose? Are you fulfilling that purpose that he's put you there where you're at? Uh, I don't know where you're at. don't know what you're uh, there for. But God's got you there for some reason. If you're not, then you need to pray and ask God to put you where he, uh, he wants you. And wherever that is, uh, you be a, a mouthpiece, whatever, however you can. Uh, you may be like Daniel, may not have opportunity to be too open about it. Uh, when I worked at the prison, I could not... Um, just go around and try to convert everybody to Christianity. Uh, and But I could, you know, there's a way to discuss and talk and say things that uh, uh, I can assure you people knew where I stood. And so uh, both inmates and, and officers. Uh, so here is Daniel, uh, where God put him, working for this wicked king. And it took a long time. It took many years but I believe God finally got through to him. But this is not the time because he's still not accepted that the God of heaven, the Jehovah God, is the God, but just one of many still. But we'll see that changes, and little by little you'll see Nebuchadnezzar changing as we go through this book. Now, I know there's a lot of uh, prophecy, and uh, wow, at the time I've already run over. I, uh, I'm not getting into a lot of details too deep with this. Uh, other people have written and 
uh, much on these type of things, <clears throat> uh, the prophecy and things. But <clears throat> we know that uh, through history, uh, who these different um, parts of the the statue, uh, the image represented, and we know that uh, as he said that. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar was that uh, head of gold. And after Nebuchadnezzar came the Medes and the Persians, they overthrew uh, uh, the, the Babylonians later on uh, as uh, when uh, Bel Belshazzar uh, did his wicked deed of bringing all the vessels out of the temple and having a drunken party. And so uh, they followed that. And then came uh, Alexander the Great and the Greek Empire. And so, uh, as as the and someone has pointed out, and it's true, as you go down to the body, the um, <clears throat> the metals may become stronger, but they're they're less precious. Uh, and so we then until we get down to the, uh, uh, the feet and the toes, and there is strength there, but then there's division too. And then uh, and that, of course, would have been the Roman Empire that uh, came along, uh, and they were already. Uh, in existence and working uh, and competing uh, way back there and so uh, but then they finally came in and in control uh, of Jerusalem and God's people and so at any rate uh, they are the uh, final stage and, and the the mixture of the iron and the toes uh, will be uh, what people say is a re revival of that Roman Empire old Roman Empire now, I don't think it'll have to be the exact precise uh, states, but it may be the nations. Uh, a lot of people made a lot of predictions. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I'm not going to get into a, a lot of that. Uh, like I say, others have already covered those things. Uh, but uh, a lot of the predictions that's been made have been, uh, you know, kind of iffy now. Uh, uh, many people said that the European Union, as soon as, as soon as it reached ten nations, then that was going to be it. That would be the revived Roman Empire. Well, it's it went over the ten nations. Now it may come back down, as some people are, you know, some nations are trying to get out of it. Uh, it may come back down to ten, and and still could be, um, of that revived Roman Empire uh, that it talks about. Uh, but in the end. The good news is, regardless of all that, that hand, that stone that's cut out without hands, that comes and crushes everything until they're not found anymore, uh, will be the kingdom of Jesus Christ that will come and set up. He'll break all these other kingdoms into pieces. Man thinks he is so great. <clears throat> and I'll make this statement before I shut off, and I've already gone well over uh, what I planned for most of these, but um, people uh, today are looking for things, and uh, sometimes we get in a hurry to set things, and, and uh, we we say this has to be, that has to be, and a lot of times we see those things change. Uh, people thought uh, Hitler was the Antichrist. People thought this and that one. Um, and, and we are getting closer all the time. That's obvious. But uh, one of these days, Christ is going to come, and he's going to set up his kingdom, and people will be ruled uh, that are left here uh, when things are set back up. And it's going to be a terrible time that's going to come on this earth. And we'll see some of that as we go through the book of Daniel. Uh, but we'll, we'll pick back up later on. We've gone long enough on this one. Dale Little Rescue American Ministries here in Chesnadia, Romania. <clears throat>